Hello and welcome to Happy Vending. I'm Bill and today you're going to get to meet my wife. Happy Vending. So this is my wife, Melissa. Hello. And we've been married for 17 years now, and we're both educators. Actually, we met in a junior high school in this district. Actually, for the last couple of years, we worked together in this high school. Four. Four years. Uh, she was an English teacher in the high school, and I taught communications. But just this year, she got a library position in another school district, so we don't get to see each other as much during the day. But actually, just last month, I found out something that I didn't know about my wife. I was asking her if she wanted to be in an episode of Happy Vending, and she told me that she has experience um, servicing vending machines, filling them up. Probably about 20, 20, 20 years old, I think. So when she was in her 20s, she worked <laughs> at a museum around here where, I guess it was like colonial times. It was in Kutztown, and it was a Pennsylvania German museum. So she would have to do things like churn butter, like imitate how to churn butter, uh, make candles, I guess. And bake bread. And So I knew that, but just last month she told me she was also responsible for running the soda machine in the gift shop. And what did you have to do with that soda machine? Well, they would give me the key, and I would unlock that silver round thing that would go around and then I would open it and I would take money out and I would uh, put the sodas and stack them in the machine and close it back up. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to see if Melissa on her own can stock this machine. Now this machine is completely sold out. So Melissa is going to have to open up the machine, the little swirly thing that she referred to, the T-handle, and she's going to have to open that up go in the machine and get these drinks in there and we're gonna see if she's able to do it. I'm gonna man the camera and if she has any issues, I'll sort of help her along. So you think you're gonna be able to do this without help? It's been since 1996, so I might be a little rusty. She might need some help, but we'll see if she can do it. So let's, let's get started. Looks like that would go there. And voila! I was able to open it. Lefty Lucy. Correct. This machine doesn't do a lot of business, so I didn't bring too much of any drink. It's just two 12 pack cases of each flavor, except the cherry Pepsi. How many times do I get? So it opens. Oh my. There we go. Okay. 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 So we didn't have a gate. So how you think it opens? Well, here's a notch, and if I'm gonna break something, you better tell me. Okay, oh, okay, got it. All right. So I guess regular Coke goes in first. Yeah. Do you know which column that would go in? Which well, one? this says one, so I'm assuming it's this one. And you are correct. Yes. So that's where we'll put the Coke. They all roll out of there. They will, or they're supposed this to? This one day. Oh, I don't think so. See, I usually don't open up the case like this, but this is the way Melissa must have done it back at the museum. Probably. Oh, gosh. Now I'm trying to remember if I did it this way? Yeah. That's correct? Yeah, that's how we typically put them in. OK, good. Can I just drop it? Am I doing this right? Dropping it? Or should I go from the top? No, no, you, you want to start at the bottom yeah. like that. Is yeah. this correct? Yeah, you just want to make sure it lays flat. <laughs> See, hey, that's what I was telling her. <laughs> if they all roll out of there. Oh, uh, I don't think so. Now I got a big mess. Luckily, the, the floor is clean. They just cleaned the gears. Yeah. They're okay. They're closed. See this? Yeah. Like if you rip right in there and then rip this open. 
then it creates a, like a lip that the cans won't fly out of the box. When you're dealing with school faculty, the two most popular flavors are Coke and Diet Coke. They're really the, the big sellers, except, like I said, in this, in this room, one staff member likes Cherry Pepsi. So I out of all these, that's what yeah, you would pick. Yeah, I would. But I don't drink soda anymore, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. She's finished the Coke. All right, two is diet. So you learned something about soda boxes. Yeah, I did. I learned something new today. My main job was mostly a tour guide, um, but then I also did other duties around the building. I cleaned too. So at the end of the day, I would go around with uh, the sweeper, not the sweeper, but the broom. And I would broom everything. And I they dusted. probably only paid you minimum wage. I made $5 an hour. <laughs> and you know what? I was happy for it. I was in college. So I'm like, whatever you want to give me is fine. Now, I've been servicing these vending machines since 2017. How come you've never told me that you filled a soda machine before? I don't know. I never really thought about it. Sprite. Sprite. Sprite is a new addition to this room. I'm giving Sprite a try. Last year I had Monsters in there. No staff members bought Monsters. But the kids love the Monsters. And you can't keep the monsters stocked enough for the students. Yeah, but I think more so teachers drink coffee for the caffeine and like soda for like after coffee time is over yeah. during the day. Wow. I'm very efficient. I was only able to find one case of these. They're hard to find right now, so this isn't going to last very long. Okay, now I've never done. Just put the put the bottles to the back, the caps to the face to the back, but too, too too deep, like I said. Staff members prefer bottled tea over canned tea. Oh yeah. That's why I get the bottles of the tea. Because these are a squishy bottle, I don't get, a, I don't put a whole lot in the machine at once because it'll cause jams. So we don't stack them too, too high. I did it. Now I gotta close it. Is that good? Just to close? Yeah, let's take a quick look. It looks like everything's lined up facing to the back, three deep for the cans, two deep for the bottles, and they're all facing the back. Yeah, just close the gate. Okay. There's one more thing we have to do when filling a Dixie Narco that was completely empty, and that is priming the machine. Now, you probably don't know what priming the machine is, but each one of these columns has a rotor, and the cans fall in the rotor, and they have to, the products actually have to get in the rotor so that when it spins, they drop down. The first vend or two vends on each column is going to be a dry vend where the rotor is empty and it's going to spin and nothing's going to fall. And if we left it like that, the first customers coming to the machine are not going to get product. Uh, since I have seven columns here, instead of putting money in and vending it with money, I'm just going to go into 
the, uh, the service mode and manually bend each motor through the uh, control panel. And while I'm doing that, Melissa is going to grab the cans that are coming down on the chute. We'll bend each column until a product falls out and then we know it's good. And then what do I do with it after it falls out? Uh, well, that we'll need to, yeah, we'll need to put the we'll need to put the cans back up. Look at this can; it's dented. Yeah, I didn't do that. This is column two, actually. So a diet coke came out. Yeah. Nothing came out. All right. So this one definitely will come out. Let me bend one more from that motor. Whoa! Okay, that, that came out real fast and now it's in uh... Melissa missed that one. <laughs> I don't know. Should we put that back in? What do you think? No, I think somebody would get mad if they saw that. I know I would. I'd pay for that. I'm going into column four. This is the Cherry Pepsi. Yeah, it sounded like we got a jam in there. Probably take a couple waters out of here. When you start getting that squishy sound, it's a, si a sign that you got your squishy bottle stack too high. Let me do one more test bend of that. I think, I think we're good now. Just let it be known that with squishy bottles, you, you really can't stack them too high. You have to get the actual bend bottles if you want to stack it all the way, the 20 ounce bend bottles, but they're more expensive. So that's why I don't do it. All right, Melissa, it's all primed. So let's close the gate and close the door. Get that good and tight so that there's no play in the door. Otherwise, warm air gets in there and ice will form on the cooling unit. How long do I have to do this for? Until there's no play. The door shouldn't be moving in and out like yeah. it is. It's hurting my finger. You don't remember this from when you were 20? It wasn't this difficult. I think this is her least favorite part. Yeah, this is. I can tell it's getting tighter. That's good. Well, I was holding it, yeah, holding it with the other hand helps. All right, that might be enough. Let me see. Yeah, there's no play in that, so just line it up and push it in. Well, there we go. Melissa did it. What do you think was the hardest part? Um, I guess. I don't know, probably just tightening up at the end, really. Um, but it was very similar to what I used to do. So it kind of came back to me as I went. Yeah, she did a good job. I think it only took us about a half hour. So that's not too bad for her first time. And there's only one thing left to do. And that is to say... Happy vending! <laughs>